You have uh, two minutes for your final focus. Because the refugees need to survive, so they come to the country. In their opinion, they uh, they said uh, we need to select the refugees. So I want to ask, who can uh, make the this distribution? Who can decide which refugee uh, which refugee can come to the country? The government or the local people? What else? Who can make the decision? And about uh and about their uh, opinion, they mentioned about the human rights. They uh, they said they select some refugees come to their country and give the uh give the water and give uh, something food. That seems like to to treat the refugees like animals. They need the re the restrictions need to re to be very clear, but they never mention about that. And in our contention, aging population, it is urgent urgent problem. We need to solve it now so that there's um. Uh, maybe more serious and about environmental problem. I think our uh, opponents, second speaker, may be uh, misunderstanding. We mentioned about the refugees now. Some country is true they save the refugees, they help the refugees to build a shelter. However, the shelter build the place will be dangerous. We have ven venomous uh, snakes or venomous spiders which are harm for the refugees. So if the refugees get some uh, spread disease, so when they come to another place, they will give more disease to the local citizens, which is very harmful for the country. And also about the sympathy. I really want to uh, tell them, but who can pay uh, if they uh, said that there's the restrictions for the refugees? Who pay the life? The, all the refugees want, want to survive in their country. They only survive not if they, the country help to the refugees. So there were no harm for the country. If, uh, and they think about the refugees who have to uh, take the weapon to their country. If they are refugees, how can they get the weapon? So I think the, the, the government should pay the obligation to the refugees. Thank you. Okay. Firstly, you talk about aging population, and we have said that we can deal with this problem by accepting a small proportion of refugees and promote having more babies at the same time. In this way, refugees are getting into the developed countries, and the workforce is enough in both short term and long term. Uh, secondly, you talk about environmental problems like the camps are plastic and they can be bad for environment and this can cause mal malaria or cholera. Uh, that can be improved, then we don't put, uh, put them in camps anymore. That's how restrictions are improved. It doesn't mean that the restrictions are no, there are no use having restrictions anymore, that they need to aban be abandoned. So we are what we are debating now is whether or not we should have restrictions, not how exactly we are going to set restrictions. It's not depending on us. Uh, the, uh, the question says on balance. Uh, different countries may have di different standards about how they are going to set the restric restrictions. But it, uh, so it, we cannot decide that. We just, uh, we just need to know that the restrictions are, ne are very necessary. Uh, we have already stated in our third contention that it is impossible not having uh, restrictions, uh, which means restri restrictions ex ex is essential for both the refugees and the local citizens and the governments. Uh, sec, we also want to talk about uh, most of the developed countries are capitalist, capitalist countries, and if you work, you will get the job and you can get into the country. 
And if you don't work, uh, you, you don't get welfare or benefits anymore. We don't want to treat refugees like animals. We just want to let them in, let them work by themselves, like uh, let them have a decent life uh, according to how, they, how much they work, how much they're working. And I think that's my final focus. Thank you. Thank you.